Hey friends, it is the hottest time of the year, July. It feels like 106 degrees. It's not that hot. It is about 97, 98. Humidity is like above 40%. However, it makes it feel like it is extremely hot and unbearable. I'm actually surprised some of my plants are still alive. I don't have any shade cloth. I actually didn't really want to do that because of the aesthetics. I'm trying to figure out a plan that works out. I really didn't think I would need it on this side of the house, but um, yeah, it, it gets pretty hot. It gets pretty hot. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna harvest and I'll show you how some things are struggling. There's only a few things I have to harvest, um, like my onions, they are ready. Um, I've got some peppers and some really cool ones. Um, and just a couple other things. But I wanted to show you progress and how my plants are really struggling right now. So stay tuned. For one, look at my sunflowers here. They've really struggled with some type of disease. Um, all this area um, was really meant for the looks. But um, I really learned my lesson on having broccoli and cauliflower. Technically, out of the entire bed, I don't have any food production at all, which is not what I was hoping to do. Um, I really thought I was gonna have broccoli and cauliflower, but look at my cauliflower. You know, it's, it stay the same. It's, there's no growth. I've got some dead leaves here. Um, I have no growth in it. And then my broccoli had a little piece that was eaten. Look, I just snapped that, but um, this little piece right there, I had a little broccoli on and then I had a caterpillar the next day and chewed that off. And um, that's it, that's all I've got. So I know next year I am not gonna be able to do this because they don't produce. All right, these are definitely going to be my fall crops for sure cold tolerant not a good idea in this area at all but look you can even see my snapdragons how they're struggling the lavender is sort of doing okay so lavender is a good idea here but everything else is not doing well um marigolds love this heat they've done so good I will definitely repeat that one. That's another marigold, another marigold. They're not vegetables, so as you can tell, they've taken up a lot of my food production, and I really didn't want that. So next time, I'm definitely gonna choose smaller plants and have more growing space. Uh, these little tomatoes, I mean, they haven't ripened, they haven't grown, and the leaves, sorry, not the leaves, the blooms here are just dying. They're just, it's just too hot. And I don't know what to do um, to cover them. I think it's just gonna be the way things are for now. Brussels sprouts here are somewhat grown. So I might just leave those there for later on. I think the shade here is doing well. But again, this is another bed that I really don't have a lot of food production. I had the little tomatoes. And then over here, I've got some cucumber that took a while to grow and some cantaloupe that I don't see anything for. Um, my lunchbox peppers, um, I just harvested three of them, but they're also struggling a little bit. And I need to add some fertilizer because I think they look a little too yellow. And then these are tomatoes that I had put in here. These are sweet 100s. Um, I accidentally left the four, I think there's four plants here, and they're getting carried away. But the same thing, there's so many possible blooms everything is just dying off because it's just too hot um, so not much food production here at all I mean it was at some point with my tomatoes but that's not my goal so I learned a lot valuable lessons over here I'm gonna do some harvesting my onions are all ready to be pulled so I'm super excited and look at my zinnias zinnias are just ginormous and they're loving this heat on this side not they don't look as good as right here in the corner like they reach for the full sun area and they look gorgeous i just love them so so much but again this is another area 
I didn't have too much food production. Um, only half of the bed because the zinnias just took over. Um, remember I snuck in a watermelon? So the watermelon is coming from there and it's trailing over, which is making the side of this bed look so pretty. And look, I've got one watermelon. So I've gotten more food from this bed than I have from these two larger seven foot beds. And then over here, look at my potatoes. They have not done good at all, they're terrible. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to continue to leave them here because I have no food production here as well. So it's, it's gonna be a, um, a theme here for July for sure. Um, they are so bad looking and um, I only got six plants out of all of the seed potatoes that I put here. Um, so definitely I'm gonna reconsider replanting this full bed for the fall. So all really good valuable lessons Sorry for the shade. Um, and these are fells that are really needed in this area because it's the first time and I'm really a first time gardener. And so this is really good. I get to learn about a lot of plants in different areas, temperatures, so I'm super excited. So let's get to harvesting. I'm only gonna show you a few. This one I'm so excited for. I think this is my largest onion. And the other onions that I pulled, oh my God, I still have two and they have been so potent, so strong. I love them and this seems to be a very big onion. So here we go. Let's, whew, that was, this one came out much quicker than the other ones. Look at the size of that onion. I love these onions. And let's pull another big one here. Hopefully. If not, these are just perfect size for me because I'm the one that eats the most out of these purple onions. That's a good size, a personal size for me. I've had to wear sunglasses to cut these onions up because that's how strong they are. I'm gonna pull just a couple more and then I'll do the rest. Let's see what this looks like. Sorry for the sun. I'm trying to get some daylight for you. Fourteen onions, and they're all different sizes. That was my biggest one. Um, I will say that my yellow onion just what didn't do so well. Um, I don't know what happened to the other ones. It was the same amount of onions. <laughs> um, but uh, with this and my other harvest, I actually did really well for first time growing onions. I'm so proud of the results. So now let's head over here. Marigolds, so much marigolds, which I love, but I'm also not a lot of growing in this bed. Um, I have some sour gherkins here, some Mexican sour gherkins, and it's vining everywhere, but no uh, blooms, so I don't know if, if we're ever going to even try it. Um, it's a very small plant, so it doesn't take up too much room, but no production. Oh look, maybe? Well maybe, I don't know. I haven't seen anything yet. Um, my Brussels sprouts took up a lot of my space and also cold crop it didn't even make it even though some of these like for sure these I planted this is a um, cauliflower indoors in February and you see it's just burned I'm not gonna get anything so ideally if I had so much room it would be okay but I have limited space so I really was hoping to get something out of it and the Sun uh, just beat me to it um, hopefully next year we'll just stick with the uh, fall and save some space for other things. Lavender is doing really well and I love it. I think that's one thing I'm going to add more next time is more uh, fragrant uh, plants for sure. And these are doing okay. My bell peppers, I've only had two so far. Um, the heat is getting to it. See how it's just so, so hot. Um, and I. To put a shade on here, I just don't know how I would do it. I would have to do it for the entire bed. Um, so we'll see how things turn out later. 
Um, these are all tomatoes. Some have tomatoes, but they don't ripen and they've been like this for a while. And I get more uh, foliage growth, but the same, same story here. Some flowers are just gone. Um, I'm gonna pull those out and a lot of things that are in here that are not producing. Um, took out most of the tomatillos because they weren't doing so good. This one on the other hand, on the corner is okay. Um, still don't see fruit in it. I've only harvested a few small little tomatillos overall, but a lot of marigolds and not a lot of fruit. Um, you see here's the tomatillo trunk that I need to come back and uh, cut off. A watermelon corner here, however, has done really, really good. I have um, already harvested two watermelons. This is gonna be my next one and it's almost there. They're personalized size and they taste so good. They hardly have um, any uh, crust or skin. It's all fruit inside and it's delicious. I highly, highly recommend it. And I'm so thankful that I have a few that are still growing. You see, there's one right there. Um, one of them, I should have listened to one of you guys. I forgot who mentioned it. Told me to move this other watermelon, if you can tell that there's one here, um, from this uh, hay. And I was gonna do it, and I forgot. And then from one day to the other, it just started to rot. Um, so I've left it here. I wanted to see if it would just compost here and benefit this plant since it's also a watermelon. And so far it looks okay. I mean, the heat is taking it. I wish I would have done something a little bit different with the um, zucchini here. Let me show you one thing. I put it too close here to the edge of the bed so that plants just coming from here and it's trailing over beautifully. I love, love the look. However, the foliage shifts up and look, it's just a crowded mess. There's no room for fruit production because everything is everywhere. So I need to come back and cut it back so that we have room for the fruit. You see, it looks like it wants to get fruit and then no bloom or it falls off. Um, this is another variety too that I was trying to grow, so maybe it is that one. But lesson learned is that the leaves will grow towards the direction of the sun and they're very tangled in here. Um, this one is a better option. It's still standing upright, but I don't have fruit yet because that's happening. So I'm not sure what's going on. Um, but you can tell the difference. It's laying from here and it's twirling that way. So it has more room upward. Here's where we're gonna do our next harvest is my peppers. And then the habaneros have been so good to me. There's quite a few habaneros in here. I've already harvested five and then look at that. And we've got some new ones over here. And my jalapenos. Look at the size of jalapenos that I have. At first, they were starting to have some signs of probably bad watering. That was on my behalf. Um, but overall, they still look really good. Look at this one. It's just so funky looking. <laughs> That's the best part of growing your own food, that it can look like anything and we'll still eat it. So let's do that. Let's harvest some of these look at all the peppers that I was able to harvest. Just got the little funky one. <laughs> 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I think I have a basket full. And with a little bit of harvest, this just looks like a lot to me anyway. So I'm super happy. Do you want to see how my pumpkins are doing? Because I'm so in love with them. <laughs> Don't look at all that, but look at my pumpkins. How big are they? My star is this one. This is the Cinderella pumpkin. And then if you disregard this piece, this is one, 
pumpkin. Look, she just, she was my first one to come out, I think after day three. And then now I just noticed this one. So we've got another one growing in there. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep that one because this is not a large pot. So I don't want to crowd it. I learned my lesson on that. But here um, are the zinnias. One here, two there. This is the one pot that didn't have any. It didn't grow. It didn't grow. And um, I grabbed these two from this one pot, and I knew one of them was going to struggle, which this one's struggling. But we got one that's doing okay. Um, and at the same time, we've got these over here. See the difference? Look how small these are compared to the others. I really do think that I need to um, improve my soil up from the top here. I need to add some more compost because this is not working out. I know I added some of the potting mix here to help with drainage, but I have too much drainage, so I shouldn't have done that. Anyways, <clears throat> my cucumber's doing okay. The one that stayed here, I had another one big and pretty, and one day it just died on me, and only one stayed, and it's just taken off my beans yeah they're struggling um i don't know what was wrong with them but see how they're just it's crispy well i've been spraying it and we've got some new growth so i've got a few beans here to harvest so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you what we got that's it just five pieces but I wanted to show you because um, the more you harvest, the more they produce uh, blooms. And um, see how it's full of more beans? We still have a lot of beans that are coming in, which I'm super excited for because this plant is still growing, even though it's looking like it is. Over on this side, look what's happening to my strawberries. I was hoping that this cantaloupe would shade it enough for it to continue to grow. And look, I just noticed this. Oh, so maybe, maybe, maybe she sticks around. We'll see. But um, it's struggling. And some of this cantaloupe is struggling too. It's got some type of disease here. And it's so hot that it just feels crispy, like the leaves feel so dry and crispy. But what can I do for now? Um, these are coming up, these are cucumbers. My um, zucchini attempt was a bad idea. Would you know if ants is part of the problem because, oops, sorry, I don't know if you can see them, but there is a lot of ants. And um, I pulled up the seeds and they are not gonna happen. These zinnias didn't come from here. The ones that I planted didn't work. I pulled those from volunteers and it looks like they're okay. And obviously, I learned my lesson on the carrots. They are just not gonna come up. I thought this area was cooler and it's not, so I have no carrot action, which is okay because that means I get to put other stuff here. And these zinnias are just being attacked by spider mites. They just look terrible. I don't know if they'll make it and we've got a lot of carrots here and it's time for me to harvest some so i'm gonna go ahead and pull that okay real quick do you see the difference this is a shorter area this is a much taller different different foliage than this one well that's because these are purple carrots and these are your traditional orange carrots and there's one in here that's really big i harvested another earlier and let's just see how this one is. They seem to get big, so hopefully we'll get lucky. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Here we go. Let's pull this carrot. Now this is a nice carrot. Look at the size of that carrot. Ah, <gasps> oh, it is so pretty. It's so pretty and big. Let's see if we can get another one. I'm gonna show you the difference. The um, orange carrots are not as big as that one because I've pulled some already. Maybe this one. Okay, let's just see. Well, yeah, I was wrong. I pulled a purple carrot. Okay, let's try it again and look for 
an orange carrot. Um, let's do this one right here in the center. Looks like it's got, look how cute this is. There's, they're not as big as the purple carrots, but I think they're adorable. Okay, we're gonna try one more because I like a variety. And let's see what we get. Oh, look, they're a little thicker. So that's not a bad thing. I actually really like that. I think these are really good size. And then over here, I put in some Tidy Treat uh, Tamara. <laughs> the heat is affecting me. Uh, the tomatoes and uh, they're growing and so is my basil. They're doing really good. Um, the cucumber here, I've got a cucumber on each corner and then a watermelon in the center and they were being attacked a lot by spider mites looks like they're doing okay um, i've got to do some cleanup because there's some dead leaves in here and um, it's not a good idea to leave them so i'm going to go ahead and clean that off pretty soon um, but it still has a lot of growth i don't have any new cucumbers but it looks like i've got a few that are growing and my cantaloupe is doing amazing it's almost ready and over here, this um, marigold just struggled. I think it's a spider mite issue. I think they might have grown in here. I saw some webs. I haven't done a lot of research on it, but it happens. Um, this one just stopped growing. and so cute, so I might just keep it um, for a um, vase or something for the house. And my celery looks like it's okay. Um, this one's growing a lot bigger than the other one because it has more room. And then my zinnias are doing lovely. Zinnias are doing really good. Time to pull the sunflowers. Um, and my uh, peppers didn't come up. This dill is looking okay. It's got some growth in there. And my tomatoes over here, they have a lot of foliage, no tomatoes. One tomato there, I left it there for the birds and then seemed to be snacking on it. But a lot of mess here and um, not a lot of production. Um, I don't know if you remember, but this was a little stunt plant. It was eaten twice and look at this, a zucchini. So maybe I get lucky and I get some more zucchini from this one. And this one is actually laying on the bed, so maybe we don't have the same problem as the other one. Um, these are volunteer tomatoes. They're starting to bloom. Don't know if I'll get lucky. And here's the other potatoes that I had that are also doing terrible. At some point they were flowering, but um, they, they look quite, quite dead if not really struggling um, I think they got attacked by a disease so I need to get um, a better variety more resistant variety um, these are two volunteer tomatoes so if I don't get much from the other ones maybe I'll get some from these on the fall and the beans nothing on the beans and I think that uh, potting mix that I added on top was a bad idea so I'm gonna come back and add a lot of my compost and hopefully um, fix that problem. Um, cantaloupe here is doing really well, uh, even though it's got spider mites. Um, and I'm almost ready to harvest this. So I think the next video on a harvest would be my watermelon and cantaloupe. So that one's almost ready. Starting to get some color. It wasn't like that earlier. Um, and so that's mostly everything. I wanted to show you how things are doing with this crazy heat. Let me show you the full basket that I harvested either way. I have it here on the ground. So look at these carrots. I have more carrots, um, but I have a full basket and I'm so thankful because uh, it's my very first time growing here in this summer heat and I've got stuff so this is pretty exciting. I hope that with my uh, fails um, you get to learn. I'm gonna keep showing you everything I do and probably it's probably gonna look 
pretty bare pretty soon because a lot of this is going. I've got to uh, plant my uh, fall seeds and I'm gonna show you that too. Um, I'm gonna try to spend some time really looking through and finding the seeds that I need for this area and I want you to um, see my selections and hopefully we get to do this together. If you have any tips for heat tolerant um, plants here and in South Texas weather, please recommend those to me because I'm still lost. I don't know a lot at all. <laughs> you guys help me a lot, so I truly appreciate that. And I don't want to make this ending long, um, so I'll leave it at that. And um, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. I need to do a thumbnail um, and these are like tipping over and stuff but let's just see <laughs> you get to be with me while I do this <laughs> um, like this or <laughs> all right we'll just leave it at that